Hello, I'm meteorologist David Kramer with Alaska Weather. Thanks for joining for a special update on our Bering Sea West Coast storm that we have moving in this weekend. Starting off, uh, quick highlights for this storm. This is formerly Typhoon Halong that has moved into the Bering Sea. It's expecting to make its way through the Bering on Saturday and starting to bring some of the heavier impacts to the southern areas of the West Coast and the Pribilof Islands Saturday evening. And will progress up the West Coast, bringing impacts through Monday night. Oh, this could be a record-breaking storm, especially for Gullivan and Kotlik and uh, areas through the YK Delta. Areas south of the Bering Strait are anticipated to see the brunt of the coastal flooding impacts as well as the high wind impacts. Areas north will still see some pretty severe impacts, but not as much as areas south of the Bering Strait. In fact, the areas north of the Bering Strait all around the Kotzebue Sound and Chukchi Sea coast will see impacts very similar to what we saw a couple days ago on October 8th. Along is going to bring some strong winds as well as the coastal flooding all along the west coast. The Pribilofs could see winds gusting up to as high as 95 miles per hour. Uh, moving up the coastline, Cuscoquam Delta Coast expecting to see winds up to as high as 90 miles per hour. Hooper Bay expecting to see winds up to 80 miles per hour. And there will be a chance for a period that could see uh, winds up to as high as 100 miles per hour for about a 6 to 12 hour period at the height of this storm moving into uh, Sunday. St. Lawrence Island and the YK Delta coastline could see wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour and areas along the southern Sioux Peninsula could see winds up to 70 miles per hour. Take a look at some of the weather that's going to be causing this. Here is our storm that is former Typhoon Halong that is moving up into the Bering Sea on Saturday. This is Saturday afternoon time frame, and we're starting to see some of the stronger winds approaching the Aleutian Islands with this system and starting to bring some of the first rounds of rain to the southwest coastline. As we move into Sunday afternoon time frame, we can see a lot of the stronger winds around this low, uh, bringing in a lot of stronger winds into the Kotzebue Sound area as well as the Norton Sound area and down the southwest coast as well. So we'll focus in first on some of the wind speeds starting on Saturday afternoon. Some of the stronger winds here uh, getting up well above 50 miles per hour for the Aleutian Islands and starting to make their way into the Pribilof Islands as well. As we move into Sunday morning, we can really see the strongest coral winds. This is where we're going to see those winds gusting up to potentially as high as 95 miles per hour for the Pribilof Islands on Sunday morning. Then as we step forward into Sunday afternoon, we're going to see those winds shift now, be along the southwest coastline, bringing in a lot of strong winds for the YK Delta area. Could see uh, wind gusts up to near 90 with Hooper Bay in that period where they could see winds up to as high as 100 miles per hour, getting up to around 70 miles per hour for the Sewer Peninsula here Sunday afternoon. Getting a little bit of the lay of the land for winds up farther to the north in some of these areas. So Unalakleet is going to see some of the stronger winds here. This is the Sunday morning time frame between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. Going to see wind gusts to potentially as high as 80 miles per hour. See a lot of the stronger winds here are going to be Sunday morning through Sunday afternoon, especially Hooper Bay again, 10 a.m. all the way through that 10 p.m. time frame. You're going to see those stronger coral winds that could get again up to as high as 100 miles per hour in that block of time in the core of Sunday. We're going to see some stronger winds at Unalakleet uh, up to as high as 65 miles per hour out for much of Sunday and Monday with a stronger core up a little bit stronger there Sunday afternoon time frame between 4 and 10. Up at Nome, we're going to see some of the stronger winds really pick up Sunday morning at 10 a.m. through uh, Sunday night. And those are going to see winds that could get up to as high as 80 miles per hour. Kotzebue going to see winds up to as high as 65 miles per hour Sunday morning. Continuing through much of uh, Sunday in the afternoon time frame, picking up could see up to 80 miles per hour. And that's going to go into Monday as well. And then for Point Hope and for Ukiagvik, we're going to see winds above 50 miles per hour. Not quite as strong as some of the locations, a little bit farther to the south. The low is going to be dying off a little bit then, but still pretty strong there. Up above 50 miles per hour. Uh, or up to 50 miles per hour through the whole time frame getting into Monday for some of those more northern locations. 
So as we look at some of our coastal flooding, uh, we're going to highlight a couple of the areas where we expect some of the biggest impacts. One of those is at Gullivan. We do expect major coastal flooding in the area. Uh, it's possible to see water overtopping the berm, causing significant inundation. Water levels may reach record levels. Significant erosion is likely. The old runway will be overtopped and could have some water source problems at the tank farm, store clinic, and other areas. Uh, be very mindful of areas all around Gullivan with this storm. We're gonna see water levels eight to 13 feet above the normal highest tide line. Uh, peak water levels are gonna occur Sunday afternoon through Monday afternoon. Winds getting up to 70 miles per hour with those gusts sustained. Winds staying between 35 and 45 miles per hour gonna be out of the south, but transitioning to be more westerly into Monday afternoon. And again, timing here for the winds Saturday night through Monday morning. Take a quick look at their hydrograph here. The main focus is the difference from normal. So these lines down at the bottom are showing the normal tide range. And you can see here, as we get into the core of the highest uh, coastal flooding concern, we're gonna see those again, eight to 13 feet above the normal tide line. As we move into uh, Hooper Bay, one of our other big areas of concern, major flooding or major coastal flooding is still possible there as well. Uh, water likely to reach into the village. Hooper Bay fuel storage may be inundated and the road to the airport may be partially submerged. Airstrip use or access may be cut off. Significant erosion may occur and uh, the wastewater facility could be at risk as well. So what to expect here, water level six to 10 feet above the normal highest tide line. Timing highest water levels expected early Sunday morning through Sunday evening. Winds could be gusting up to 80 miles per hour with sustained winds 35 to 45 out of the south. But again, switching over to the west in the Monday uh, morning time frame, and those strongest winds Saturday night into Monday morning. Quick look at their hydrograph as well. Again, we're trying to see the difference between the normal tide lines and how significant this is gonna be of an increase uh, getting above potentially to that 10 foot mark above that normal highest tide line could cause quite a few problems in the area there. Uh, so recap again of everything. Uh, big picture here is that areas south of the Bering Strait through the YK Delta uh, could see impacts that are at or above what we saw in Murbach and for the YK Delta area at or above what we saw last August in 2024 with some of the coastal flooding that we had down there back in uh, August of last year. Uh, north of the Bering Strait, we're going to see impacts that are going to be very similar to what we saw a couple days ago on October 8. Those could be record setting uh, areas, especially for the areas from Gullivan farther south along the YK Delta area. We're going to see uh, areas south of the Bering Strait are going to have the brunt of the coastal flooding. Again, this could be more than what we saw in those locations from Gullivan, Unalukli, down south through the YK Delta area. Nome will be, or is expected to be, a little bit lower than what we saw for Murbach, but still quite high. Uh, Halong will bring strong winds as well with it. A lot of winds above uh, 70 miles per hour here, 95 potential at the Pribilofs, 90 for the Kuskokwim Delta coastline. Hooper Bake get up to 80 with a period on Sunday where they could get up to as high as 100 miles per hour, St. Lawrence Island, and the YK Delta coastline above 80 miles per hour, and areas on the southern Seward Peninsula side 70 miles per hour. Still strong winds north of the Bering Strait as well, as especially as we get farther into Sunday and into Monday, uh, not quite as strong as the areas to the south of the Bering Strait. For Alaska Weather, I'm David Kramer. Thanks for watching.